People see our shop videos and they ask us what this thing is. Well, it's a rotating beacon that comes on when the garage door opens. You get so excited when somebody comes home, you know, like a dog. Because shouldn't your arrival home be cause for celebration? We had a rotating beacon in the two-car garage next to the shop, but it suffered an unfortunate accident. So we decided it was time for an upgrade. I mean, if you got to replace it, why not make it better than it was before? We got two of the rotating beacons to replace the one that burned out. Now, the rotating beacons are just plastic rotating beacons. They're 110 volts. They go right into the, the mains on your house. And they have a plastic piece on the bottom that conceals a motor drive that also connects to the light bulb. So when it runs, it just spins the reflector, the light bulb is stationary, and the motor is right here. So all we're gonna do is hang this upside down from the ceiling and have it triggered and powered by the garage door opener. So here's how it's gonna work. We're gonna mount a junction box, this one right here, to the garage door opener so that we can plug into it. Then we have a black cord here, a 10 foot cord, that's gonna reach into the attic. This will allow us to unplug it whenever we need to. The black cord will feed into this junction box, and this junction box will feed into house wiring. The house wiring will go to two other junction boxes on the corners of the garage that we will plug the two rotating beacons into. And everything you see here except for the first junction box and the black cord will be hidden in the attic. I've removed the access panel from the garage door opener and unplugged it so I won't shock myself here. But the idea is that we're going to draw power from the motor here that runs the garage door opener and we're going to run to this junction box which is going to mount right up here so that we can plug that cable in. That way if we ever have to take the garage door opener down we can disconnect the house just by unplugging that one cable. First thing to do is to drill a couple of holes so that we can mount the junction box to the metal top of the garage door opener. I'm taking care here to stay away from wires and chains and that sort of thing. Then matching holes are drilled into the junction box and you can see that I've already punched out the access hole that the wire is going to go through into the box. Wires are harvested from an old extension cord that we keep around for exactly this purpose and those wires are used to connect the receptacle that will be mounted to the top of the garage door opener. I'm doing it down here on the workbench because it's a lot easier to do it here than up in the air on the garage door opener. Off camera, I use this bit to drill the hole that the wires are going to go through on the garage door opener. And here I am feeding the wires into that hole I drilled with that weird looking bit, which is designed for exactly this purpose. And the receptacle goes on very easily and it sits on top of those holes that were pre-drilled. Next, it's time to go to the drill station to get the drill and drill bits that we're going to use. And then two sheet metal screws are used to attach the receptacle to the top of the garage door opener. Super easy. Now to connect this receptacle that we've in the process of wiring into the garage door opener, we're going to use something called a tap splice. That's what this is right here. If you ever installed a car stereo in the before time, back in the 80s, when we were converting from 8-tracks to cassettes, to the new high-tech cassettes, we used these because cars weren't as advanced as they are now and we tried to find positive and negative wires and speaker wires and so forth, and you could tap into the wires of your car without cutting the wires. So the way this works is, the wire that you're going to tap goes right through the splice, like this. See? Don't cut it at all. It just piggybacks on that. And the wire you're going to attach connects right here. And you don't actually, I've got these stripped, you don't have to. And then when it's all done, you crush this little guillotine right here and it goes into both wires and this little guy flips over the top and closes it off. So you've got one wire coming in and it splits off into two. That's a tap splice and that's what it was like in the 80s. Here's the tap splice in action piggybacking onto this blue motor wire that we're going to get our power from. That blue wire is only energized when the motor runs so we can attach the other alternating current wire to this convenient block here where several other wires are already drawing power. With everything wired inside the garage door opener, it's time to put the cover on the receptacle and we're ready to plug the cable in. So our receptacle is mounted and wired up there to the garage door opener. I still gotta put the access panel back on, but I'll do that after we test this. I've got one of the rotating beacons here. I've got it tied into that 10 foot cord just with electrical 
uh, clips and that sort of thing. So it's a temporary arrangement. We're just going to see if it works. Notice I'm not touching anything, even though it's all insulated and careful. Uh, we're always careful. Although I will not wear my helmet, we're not going into space. All right, so we're going to, garage door is actually open right now, so we're going to close it. And when the motor turns, that tap that we put on will feed 110 volt power down to this rotating beacon if it all works. So we're actually functioning and the garage door takes about 11 seconds to cycle all the way through. And then it shuts off. So we're tapping just a small amount of power off of that main motor through the wires that are already up there. Everything is grounded, everything's insulated, everything is strain uh, protected and everything else. So I think we've got a pretty safe setup here. The next step is to go up into the attic and put in the wiring that will go up in these two corners for the two lights. The next day. A quarter inch hole is drilled into the base of each of the rotating beacons where a mounting bolt will be placed. Now we assemble the ceiling mount for both rotating beacons. There's that mounting bolt that goes in. There's a washer and nut that hold it in place. And this bolt will go through the sheetrock and have a second bolt attached that will hold it up to the ceiling. It doesn't have to hold a lot of weight and one bolt should be plenty. Look at that, we got two rotating beacons running perfectly with the mounting bolts in place. They're gonna be mounted just like this. These are gonna look awesome in the garage. Next step, the attic. Follow me. The black cable from the garage door opener is nailed down to the studs to make sure it doesn't get loose. Then the cable is connected to proper house wiring with wire nuts inside of a junction box. This keeps everything safe and keeps it from being accidentally pulled out or otherwise loosened. And then I turn the music up. Then the receptacle is wired up. This is the one for the right side of the garage. A second will be wired for the left side, and it looks just like this one. Both receptacles are wired in parallel so they don't interfere with each other or stop working if one of the two rotating beacons burns out. These aren't Christmas lights after all. Back down in the garage, the original rotating beacon has been removed and the small mounting hole it had is enlarged to a quarter inch and the small power hole that it had is enlarged for the plug to go through to be plugged in upstairs. Notice I'm wearing eye protection here because there was sheetrock everywhere when I drilled this and the holes on the other side. My assistant inserts the quarter inch bolt into the hole we just drilled and up in the attic I'm putting on a washer and a quarter inch bolt to hold it in place. The rotating beacon weighs practically nothing so one bolt is more than enough to hold it against the ceiling. Sorry we didn't film that, we didn't think of it till later, plus it's pretty tight quarters where that bolt comes to the ceiling. Notice how she's turning the light to hide the cord and untangling the cord because we're about to feed it through the hole and pull it into the attic. And there I am pulling that 110 volt cord right up through the hole. Plenty of slack there pulling it all the way through. And we're all set. Looks like it's supposed to be there, doesn't it? Over on the right side of the garage we did the same thing first drilling a hole for the power cord, but this time I ran right into a stud. I should have measured, but didn't think about it. So I drilled a second hole and everything was fine. And my assistant climbs the ladder a second time, inserts the quarter inch bolt through the hole, and waits very patiently as I crawl through the attic in a very small space to find the bolt and put the nut on washer on it so that it holds in place. There were some boxes in the way and wires and not any flooring so it took me a while but I got it. Then I pull the cord up and we are done with this mount. In the attic I pull the cord over to that receptacle, plug it in and we are fully wired with both rotating beacons. Then I leave the attic because it's hot up there. Okay, so that's the rotating beacon project. We got rid of the old and busted one. We put up two new ones to double the excitement when we come home. Who can't be excited about that? Watch this. So that's it. We love building stuff like this. We love upgrading. We love future-proofing things by putting in extra outlets and things if we ever want to expand it. So check us out if you want to see more. Binge our uh, channel if you want to see more stuff. There's always more. It's weird to us what goes viral and what doesn't, but hey, go check it out. Once again, thanks to our patrons. Love you. 
you help pay for this and made it happen and you'll make us happy every day when we come home. So subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, check out our other videos. See you next time.